Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Yeah. Why is it happy birthday? Who remembers from a year ago when we talked about this? And you were all like paying rapt attention. Pentecost. Yes? <laughs> That's an answer, not the answer I was looking for. Let's sing happy birthday to Kate. Hit Lee later. <laughs> it's also the birthday of the church because it's Pentecost. Uh, Katie will tell us more about that. Speaking of Katie, Katie, would you stand up and face the humans? Everybody say hi, Katie. Hi, Katie. This is Katie Whelan. She is the youth director, tell me if I get anything wrong, at Lands Lutheran. She's been there for two years and she's going to start seminary this fall. And um, she's preaching today. So Katie's giving us the word. So pray for her. Um, Kind of cool on the celebration of the day of Pentecost because Pentecost was the first time that the church experienced the power of the Holy Spirit who came and with tongues of fire gave a lot of different people the passion and ability to tell the story and Katie's called to keep telling the story so it fits really well and we didn't even intend that. It just kind of happened. It was great planning we did. Let's take credit. It's a God thing. So we think that Katie's here today. Um, Announcements, please look in the bulletin. I'll highlight a few of them. Today we also say thank you to Michelle. It's her last day as our faith formation facilitator. There's going to be cake and coffee in the narthex, so make sure you have a piece of cake and tell Michelle thank you herself. Next Sunday, we are installing and blessing Nicole Wananda into the new position, her new position, a faith formation facilitator. So we got a lot of old and new happening. Um, there is a Dad's Belgian Waffle breakfast at the Lions Community Center next week, which everybody should go to, but go to church first and get your waffles. Uh, vacation Bible School is coming up. If you haven't signed up, please sign up so we know volunteer-wise who we need to get, and we need volunteers. So if that's you, please volunteer to sign up. It's going to be awesome. There's a, a, a volunteer sign-up in the back. Aging But Dangerous meets for the last time before their summer break on June 7th from 5 to 7. And um, kind of a a new piece, we have a a play and pray small group that meets monthly, and of course the women's Bible study meets monthly. They're now combining their meetings so that as as the kids play and pray, the adults can have Bible study at the same time kind of thing. So I invite folks to think about think about that. Those are, I think, the um, only announcements that I have. Before we start worship, too, we're going to bless our quilts. Did you notice the quilts on the pews? Kind of thought putting the quilts in front, you know, that you could lean. First, the people in front lean back on those quilts. How does that feel? Yeah, so you get rewarded for sitting in front today. Um, But these quilts are going to Lutheran World Relief, I believe. Is that correct? And they will warm hearts and bodies around the globe, especially at this time when there's a lot of refugees running around the globe that need these things. So if everybody who's close to one would put your hand on a quilt, we're just going to pray for these quilts and and where they're going to go. I'm going to come do that too. Yeah. Lord God, we thank you for not only these quilts, but quilts around Lutheran churches all over the country that that faithful hands have made, the prayers that have gone into the stitches and the batting and the love that's gone into these quilts. Speed them on their way through Lutheran World Relief to cold bodies that need them. And may they not only be a gift of warmth, but a sign, Lord, that your love and care is there for those who are looking for homes, who are looking for shelter, who are looking for food. May they find those things as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for our quilters for that awesome, awesome ministry. Let's pray and ready our hearts and minds for worship today. The Lord be with you. you. Let us pray. Lord, summer's upon us. Uh, Transition is happening not only with our own our own church, uh, changing of faith formation facilitators and whatnot, but Summer jobs, graduation parties, all these things that shake us up out of our, our normal, normal lives and remind us that, that you kill the old and raise the new. Open our hearts today to hear what Katie has to say, to hear what old things are dying inside us and what new things are being raised, Lord, and help us to say yes to the new things that come from you. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite everybody to please stand. On this day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit calls us together as the people of God. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Confess our sins together. Faithful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. The glory of your holy name. Amen. Friends, God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin. and He makes us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Today live as people who are indeed set free. Amen. Our first hymn, O Holy Spirit, Root of Life. and let us pray together. God, our creator, the resurrection of your son offers life to all the peoples of the earth. By your Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love, empowering our lives for service and our tongues for praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The first reading is from Acts. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in their tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were staying in Jerusalem God-fearing Jews from every nation upon heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, What does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, <laughs> They just had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven and raised his voice and answered the crowd, Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. 
Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last day, God says, I will pour out my spirit among all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions and your old men will meet dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord, and everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. I invite everybody to stand. Alleluia, 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 alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and that will be enough for us. Jesus answered, Don't you know me, Philip, even after I have been among you such a long time? Anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, Show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and that the Father is in me? The words I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority. Rather, it is the Father living in me who is doing this work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or at least believe on the evidence of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me will do the works I have been doing, and they will do even greater things than these, because I am going to the Father. And I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son, You may ask me for anything in my name, and I will do it. If you love me, keep my commands, and I will ask the Father that he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever, the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. All this I have spoken while still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Now I invite the children to come up. I have a little basket of goodies up here with some instruments we're going to play.
one around them. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Will you guys please pray with me? Dear God, thank you for blessing us with the Holy Spirit and reminding us of this blessing on the day of Pentecost, the birthday of the church. Uh, remind us that you are always there with us and we are able to spread your word. Amen. Thank you so much. If you put your noisemakers back for me, that'd be great. Lord God, open our ears, our eyes, and our hearts, that we may hear and receive your word through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The wind that blew on the disciples on the day of Pentecost was no mild breeze. In the Acts reading from this morning, we hear it described as the rush of a violent wind, and it shook the entire house in which the disciples were sitting. The wind shaking the whole house was a mighty tornado ripping through, or perhaps, as I've heard another pastor describe it, a holy hurricane. But why did the Holy Spirit come with such force? Change was coming. God was showing up to change his people, and change is never easy. I had a professor in college who used to say, if it doesn't challenge you, it will not change you. And I have found those words to ring true time and time again. So what was it that needed changing? To answer this question, I think it's important that we have some context on what the day of Pentecost is all about. Historically, Pentecost is a Jewish feast celebrating the giving of the Torah and the summer wheat harvest. Um, it was celebrated 50 days after Passover and was traditionally marked by pilgrims coming to Jerusalem from all over the world to celebrate the event. In our reading from Acts, the disciples are gathered together to celebrate this um, feast when the violent rushing wind comes in. Believers from all over were gathered in the city that day, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and able to speak in their native language, yet understand one another. The Holy Spirit gave the people the ability to translate the message into their own language, breaking down barriers and giving everyone the opportunity to proclaim the word of God. Our God is a God of inclusion, and the events of Pentecost make that clear. Everyone was given the voice from the Spirit. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, I will pour out my Spirit, verse 18 reads. Or if we look at verse 21, it says, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Everyone. Everyone shall be saved. We have a God of inclusion. But are we a people of inclusion? As humans, we have an innate desire to categorize things. It allows us to organize things, people, ideas, and really everything in the world around us to simplify our understanding of the world. It's something we quite literally cannot stop our brain from doing. Finding patterns, making connections, and categorizing things is all a part of association, association learning, which is the unconscious part of the brain um, that processes everything associatively rather than logically or analytically. Associative thinking functions on speed rather than accuracy, um, so it can make mistakes sometimes. If errors are made and not corrected, they can become beliefs or habits of thinking, just like habits of behavior. The more frequently we see a pattern or connection, the more likely we are to believe that it is true and accurate, um, which is also the case for classification and categorization. And no one, so when I'm speaking about this classifying and categorizing, we think of it when we do it with humans as stereotyping. And no one wants to be thought of as a stereotype, but at the same time, like I just explained, we literally cannot stop our brains from doing this. One of the ways categorization and stereotyping manifests in a negative way throughout society is in the form of racism. I will never forget 
um, taking a child psychology class in college and learning about the doll experiment. If you've never heard of it, this study was originally conducted in the 1940s by doctors Kenneth and Mamie Clark. The doll experiments um, studied black school-age children's attitudes about race by giving them identical um, white and black-skinned dolls and asking them which they would prefer to play with. The majority, 63% of the black school-age girls, preferred to play with the white doll and assigned the white doll positive <laughs> characteristics while giving the black doll negative character traits. Upon being asked to describe which doll looked most like them, the children became emotionally upset, having to identify the doll that they had rejected. The Clarks concluded that black children, as a result of living in a racist society, had come to see themselves in a negative light. The Car Clark's research was used in the landmark Brown versus Board of Education case to advance um, the cause of integrated schools. The Clark's findings about black children's negative view of themselves were attributed to the effects of segregation. However, this research was not just limited to black children in segregated schools in the 20th century, it still is affecting children in integrated schools today in the 21st century. The Clark study has been duplicated and modified by countless psychologists throughout the years. In the Clark's original study, the children were asked questions about the dolls, such as which doll, black or white, is the nice doll? And some research argue that sitting the kids down in this interview kind of setting and asking them to assign traits to the dolls is really unnatural. Um, and a better way to, uh, to gather data would be to simply observe uh, the children playing with the dolls in a natural setting. So that is just what assistant professor of curriculum and instruction at Texas A&M University, Tony Sturdivant, I'm probably saying that wrong, Tony, um, conducted her own version of the doll experiment. And in her experiment, um, she placed four racially diverse dolls, white, Latina, black with lighter skin, and black with darker skin, in a diverse preschool classroom with children of all races, and observed as they played for one whole semester. Even without specific questions asked, um, Tony Sturvident found a great deal of bias in how the girls treated the dolls. The girls rarely chose to play with the black dolls, and on the rare occasion that they did choose the black ones, they mistreated them. The children were also far more likely to step on or over the black dolls to get to other toys, which did not happen with the fair-skinned dolls. The Clark's original study was used to help desegregate schools, but yet half a century later, we are still seeing that anti-black bias. We live in a society with institutional and structural racism that has been unconsciously absorbed by children for decades. When people see racist acts in the news, we find it easy to point a finger and say, these are horrible, horrible things. I would never do such a thing. But the truth of the matter is more complicated. We, as United States citizens, live in a country with institutional, systemic, and structural racism, and we all play a part in that, whether we personally have individually racist views or not. Um, I just threw out a bunch of terms there. So I want to take time to walk through them with you um, so we can understand the ways that racism is prevalent in our lives all of the time. Institutional racism is policies or behaviors within an organization intended to discriminate against people of color. An example of this would be a hiring manager disqualifying candidates based on their name or having two equally qualified candidates for the same position, one named Bob and one named something you cannot pronounce, and citing that you hired Bob because it was a better cultural fit, which is, in fact, discriminatory. Structural racism is cultural values in a society that are so ingrained in daily life that they are seen as the way that things are, which is relevant in these doll studies I just talked about, or the fear a black person might have by being pulled over by a cop by all these horrible 
um, instances of um, ag aggravated violence against black people by cops, um, or a judge uh, giving a longer sentence for um, a black person for something like possession of marijuana, whereas a white counterpart would often not face jail time or face a much shorter sentence for possession of marijuana. Systemic racism is perpetuated discrimination within a system that was founded on racist principles or practices, such as a social work department lacking diversity in their staff and students, despite training them to serve um, uh, communities with minorities. So what is my point in telling you all of this? Even if we don't think we are racist people, we live in a racist society, and there is no escaping that. But what can we do about it? As I was saying earlier, our God is a God of inclusion and not exclusion. And guess what? Back when the story of Pentecost took place, there was racism too. You bet there was. But the Holy Spirit shook us with that holy hurricane to break down the barriers. The Holy Spirit came over the people and they were able to share the word in their own native language and be understood by everyone. No matter what your language, your race, no matter where your place in the food chain of society, God's desire is that everyone be included in the church of Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter so much to God where you come from, but it matters where you are going. We all should and are able to share, shout, and proclaim the good news. The challenge is that that blessing is for all of us. Everyone is included. Pentecost is a great harvest of the Spirit because of Pentecost, we reap the harvest of power to be a witness and the ability to be renewed and transformed. Change is hard. Combating racism in a society where it is so deeply ingrained in us is certainly not a one-man job. But the Holy Spirit came as that rushing violent wind to shake the disciples awake and to eliminate the elite and to translate that message to everyone. How can we continue to translate that message today? I would suggest that we lead with love, be like our God of inclusion, and when it gets tough, remember that if it doesn't challenge you, it won't change you. Amen. Thank you, Katie. We continue together our hymn of the day, Spirit of God, descend upon my heart, and I'll invite our ushers to come forward as we pass out the offering plates, please. <laughs>
offering plates may come forward. Friends, we pray together and thank God for gifts first given to us that we give for the work of the church and the ministry of Christ in our community. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts, ourselves, our time, and our possessions. Use us in what we have gathered in feeding the world with your love through the one who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite the congregation to please stand. Confess our faith in our Lord together. Together with one voice, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, the resurrection of the body, the life everlasting. Amen. I'm glad you guys are paying attention. Our prayer offer today is Angela. Thank you. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the people, the church, in, for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Holy living one, holy moving one, burst open our locked doors and by your spirit drive us out into the world, proclaiming your mighty deeds. Direct our words and actions, trusting the advocate abiding in and among us. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Feed and care for creatures that remain hidden to us, yet contribute to the vibrancy of your creation. Train us to interact and with creation from a place of wonder, awe, and reverence. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Send your spirit to places where language is a barrier to justice and mercy for those who seek it. Bless the work of translators, interpreters, and teachers. Promote understanding for the sake of those longing for true freedom and peace. God, in your mercy, Comfort all who live in constant fear and any who are suffering, especially Keith, Dolly, Finley, Sarah, Roger, Judy, Donald and Nancy, Larry, Dan, Matt, Jan, Sue, Pud, and the family of Joanne Nord. Remind them that your spirit has made them your children and that they are never far from your glory. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide all bishops, pastors, missionaries, and other ministries of the gospel. Foster our relationships with partner synods and local ministry partners that our visions and actions are spirit-led. God, in your mercy. Gather your people across regions, nations, and lands. Root our common life in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. And by your spirit, bind us together with all the saints who have gone before us. God, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Today, friends, may the peace of Christ be with you all. Share the greeting of peace with somebody near you, somebody you know well, and somebody you want to know more. I want to know everybody more. <laughs> Friends, prepare your hearts. We celebrate together the Holy Supper. Today, may the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God.
remember again together today that on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread, broke it, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, Christ took the cup. Having given thanks, he gave it to all to drink, saying, this is my blood shed for you. For the... I am losing it today. <laughs> After supper, Christ took the cup. He gave thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, this is my blood. This is the new promise given to you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. We pray together with one voice as Christ taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Friends, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. As Katie said, this is a place for everybody. If you're new to St. Luke Lutheran Church, you're welcome to come up for communion. I invite everybody to be seated, and I'll welcome up our communion assistants, please. Spirit of rest. 
restlessness Go through the wilderness Wind, wind on the sea You call from tomorrow You break ancient schemes From the bondage of sorrow All captives dream dreams Our women see visions Our men clear their eyes At bold new decisions Your people arise Spirit, spirit of gentleness Blow through the wilderness Calling on free Spirit, spirit of restlessness Stir me from placidness Wind, wind on the sea Friends, may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you all and keep you in his loving grace. Amen. We'll remain seated for the moment for our communion prayer because we have a special blessing from Michelle before our ascending. Let us pray together. O oh God, our life, our strength, our food, we give you thanks for sustaining us with the body and blood of your Son, by your Holy Spirit, enliven us to be his body in this world, that more and more we will give you praise and serve your earth and its many peoples. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Michelle, will you come up to the front, please? All right. Do you want to tell everybody what that is first? Why don't we start there? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You are blessed beyond measure every single day is a day you should treasure. Life is a series of thousands of miracles. Take time to notice them. Gratitude enables your heart to tell a better story. It's the little things that mean the most. Count your blessings. Blessed are those who see beautiful things in humble places when other people see nothing. May your troubles be less and your blessings be more, and nothing but happiness comes through your door, grateful, thankful, and blessed. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for that gift. <laughs> Friends, I invite you to, we are going to bless Michelle together, because it's not just the pastor's job to bless those who serve the church, it's all our job, because who's the church? Exactly. I love you guys. Okay, so prepare. You're going to pray for Michelle towards the end. And kids, I'm going to invite you to come up too.
Today it is our privilege to give thanks for Michelle Mannis, who is completing a time of six plus years of service to this congregation as St. Luke's Faith Formation Facilitator. I believe I speak on behalf of the entire congregation when I say the words from Matthew 25, well done, good and faithful servant. In our baptismal vows, we promise to live out our Christian faith in five distinct ways. To live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and to share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ, the word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace throughout the earth. Michelle, you have lived out your baptismal vows in service as our church and not only yourself, you have equipped us to live out our baptismal vows in service to our families. Thank you. I invite kids to come up, I, kids, and you know what, if you're, if you're okay with it, even teenagers, and may, in, anybody who Michelle has worked with, facilitated faith for, drawn into, it can be anybody, okay? It can be everybody. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to put you in the middle, we're doing laying on of hands, and kids, put your hands on Michelle's shoulder, head, eyes, whatever. And people who are in the back can put your hand on somebody's hand who's on Michelle's hand. It's a chain of hands. As our folks up front, and I'll lead the congregation in our prayer for Michelle, transitions are awesome. It's when we grow the most. So Michelle's, this is going to be good. Friends, let us pray for Michelle's transition. We pray together. God of our transitions, you led Noah through the waters of the flood to the promise of new life. You led Israel from slavery in Egypt to freedom in the promised land. You led Jesus from death on the cross to victory over an empty tomb. Bless Michelle in her transition. May she find time to rest and reflect. May she hear your voice calling new ways. And may we, as her church, be a source of support and blessing in her next chapter. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everybody. You may return to your seats. The, the, the reflecting and resting might be the hard part, right, Michelle? But do that. You've got to take time for that. Oh, wait. No, stay up here. I forgot. Um, the CCT, I believe, has a gift, and so does the youth ministry team. So you guys, come on up and present your gifts. Let me get a mic if you want to say something. Hang on. Give God the glory for choosing Michelle to lead us as the faith facilitator. We thank Michelle for teaching the children and the young adults life lessons and all the memories. With grace, kindness, love, and laughter. A lot happens to make everything go that Michelle did. We'd come to church and we'd see her busy in her office or downstairs or doing whatever she needed to do to make the events happen. Some of those events were uh, Vacation Bible School, the COVID services, feeding starving children, campfires, dinner on us, organizing the kids, music, the drums, and the candle. When she had the birthday candles up here and she said, let, let your light shine, and they wouldn't blow out. Um, <laughs> and the rocks in the jars, all, there were so many little things. These were just some of the big ones. <laughs> so we, um, as your church family and CCT, have a gift for you. And um, like you can, and like Pastor said, well done, good and faithful servant. Telling us that. <laughs> well, on behalf of the education team, I have known Michelle since diapers. <laughs> I used to care for her, and she has cared for our family as she has cared for all the members of St. Luke's family. And thank you for thriving in the chaos. 
thank you for bringing everyone together time and time again, getting people to say yes time and time again. You have a tremendous ability to bring God's grace and presence in every situation. And we are forever blessed for that. And we are forever thankful that you are continuing to volunteer for us as your family. So from all the youth here at St. Luke's, as many as I could, could, could get, we have a card for you. And a cake in the back. And so before everybody gets back there, though, I need old cakes. We need Michelle to come back there for a picture. So... You have touched everyone's lives, and so never forget that. Church. Friends, let's stand for our final blessing. Good thing to think about as we say to dismissal, we say, go in peace, you are the church, as we say hello to a person entering seminary. Not farewell, but transition to a person moving on to a new chapter. We can wonder, okay, we are the church. Whose life is God calling us to connect to? Today, may, today, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you in favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Spirit has moved Debbie. We are going to do happy birthday to the church instead of what we were going to do. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear church. Happy birthday to you. Go in peace, you are the church. May we all act like it. Yes, we are. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.